I jumped as I pulled away from the memory, my head throbbing from the force of the memory jumping into my head. Sunspot did the same thing, saying, Shit, that hurt. What the hell? Sorry, I didn't know I was going to feel like that. And I said, rubbing my temples. I looked over at her once. The pounding started to go away, asking, What happened after you woke up from that flight? She looked at me, confused. Huh? The fight with the Pegasus? The gray one with the green eyes? I said. It took her a moment to catch on. When she did, she said, Oh, the memory? I didn't realize you saw it already. That spell only lasted a few seconds. R really? I asked. Huh, I guess Lacuna was right. A spell made watching a memory a lot faster compared to a memory orb. Yeah. I just felt a pressure for a few seconds, then a sharp pain. Like somebody stabbed a needle into my brain. Sunspot said, shaking her head again. Yeah, I did see the memory. That spell makes them go by faster. That might be why it hurt a little. I said. Anyway, what happened when you woke up? She shrugged. Spent a day in the infirmary with a sprained wing joint and a broken rib. Took a little bit for the Ministry of Peace rep to heal. What about the Pegasus? Moon, I think his name was? I asked. Oh, Mooney? That's what we called him after that day? She said with a chuckle. Big Mac took him on and trained him alongside the rest of us. He ended up being top of our class alongside me. We both had good scores and talent by the end of it all. Whatever happened to him? I asked, wondering how much more I could learn from my distant grandfather from her. I mean, hell, she was alive during the time. She took a moment to think back. Well, I know we ended up on a scouting team at one point. Like I said, I didn't know him well. Once training was over, I didn't see him again. Still, I know that after training, he worked with the, the scouts of the Royal Army for a bit. I heard later that he was kicked out for disobeying orders. He was moved into a fighting unit near the Badlands, but again, disobeyed orders. Don't know how, though. Later, he was put onto another scouting party under a pegasus called Thunderlane. On his second mission, they ran into a camp of zebras, getting close to a town called Saddleton, and he died in that raid. Are you sure? I asked. Wondering how a story like that could have come about. I mean, I knew that he lived through the mission because I saw the memory of when Celestia recruited him for the children. Yeah. He was only planning to die in that raid. He went in with that pony you asked about before, Night Stalker, and died helping him escape after killing three legionaries. It was all over the news, though I still can't remember his full name. It was just Mooney to everyone, she said. My own brain was going crazy as I started wondering what could have made the ponies of Equestria think that he died, and no pony asked who this Night Stalker was. Did the princesses do something to make every pony forget Absent Moon? They had to have done something like that. Then I remembered Night Stalker always saying that Absent Moon, aka Mooney, was dead. Is that what he meant by that? There had to be ponies that knew him before he was Night Stalker, like Big Mac. He called him Night Stalker in that memory before he died. And Thunderlane knew him before Hoof too. But still, he always called him by his new name, or Captain. Lightning does too. Same for a few other ponies who knew him before he was Night Stalker. This was all getting a little strange. Well, stranger than what was normal for Night Stalker. You okay? Sunspot asked. I looked back at her and nodded. Yeah, just thinking is all. You look like some pony just told you that Celestia herself was about to pay you a visit. You're a little pale she said. It's just that I know that pony in your memory. I've seen him a few times in memory orbs, I said. Strange, though it's too bad that he died. He was a nice stallion when you got to know him. Well, as much as he'd let any pony get to know him. I think that griffin friend of his was the only one who was able to bring out the real side of him, she said. Yeah, though he didn't die like you thought, I said, watching her as she moved from to a small desk and picked up an old photo. She looked back at me. How do you know that? It's a long story. Let's just say that he changed his name and somehow got the rest of Equestria to forget his old life. I said, getting back to my hooves. I find that hard to believe. The report said that he died, she said. I looked back at her again and waved a hoof back and further indicated her strange experience. 
Yeah, and what did they say about you and Elliot? I've come to learn that when the Ministries stepped in and wanted something done, they could make any pony believe what they wanted them to. She tapped her muzzle and said, Well, you got me there. From what I learned about what happened to us, we were pronounced dead. So, I guess I see what you mean. It seems like there were a lot of secrets back in those days, I said with a sigh. Before Sunspot could say any more, the door to her room opened and Nellie was standing there, looking between the two of us, then saying, I've been looking for you, Sunspot. We've got trouble. Captain Gunny needs you up top. Sunspot put the photo down and asked quickly, What's going on? Not sure, but an enclave ship's detected us. They're looking for Shadow. There's some scary bitch on deck with five pegasi behind her and a raptor aiming its guns at our ship. Elliot said, turning to head back out of the room. What? I asked, heading to follow him. He put a paw on my head, stopping me from following. Captain says you need to stay here. If they don't come looking for you, then hide. There's a small area under Sunspot's bed. It's a hidden spot we use for smuggling. Don't come out for anything. But, I started to say, but Sunspot cut me off. He's right. Stay here until we get them to leave. She said and followed Elliot out of the room, shutting the door behind her. I wanted to follow anyway, but I knew better than that. If the Enclave were here looking for me, then I needed to stay hidden. I still wasn't at my best right now, and I was getting closer to Aura. I couldn't mess this up. I sighed and walked over to the desk. Sunspot was a moment ago and looked at the old photo she'd been holding. It was a picture of a mare that reminded me a lot of Sunspot. She was standing in front of six other pegasi, all wearing flight jackets with a big D on the left breast, with a lightning bolt going through the D. That must have been her team when she was with the Dashers. They all looked so happy in the picture, like nothing in the world could stand in their way. I flipped the picture over and saw a note that had been written on the back of it. It said, Son, got the photo developed for you finally. You look amazing in that new uniform. Stay safe out there. And remember that I'm always here for you when you get home. Stay strong, stay smart, and fly fast. Love, Featherweight. I wondered who Featherweight was, I asked myself, when a crackling laugh echoed through the door from the deck. Ha ha ha! Ye must be messing with Captain Gunny, ain't ya? What was your name again? I heard Gunny say. Moving to the door, I cracked it open a little and peeked out. I could just make out a mare in power armor. Her helmet off, standing a few feet away from Gunny. Elliot was next to him, I think, and Spun Spot was just past the hall that led to the deck. Behind the mare, five more pegasi in power armor were standing close to the mare, their energy weapons ready to fire if any pony moved too quickly. The mare had an icy blue coat. Her mane was the color of freshly fallen snow, and her eyes were an icy electric blue. It was like some pony just pulled her out of the freezer. Honestly, she reminded me a lot of Winterfrost. When she spoke, her voice was cold and thin. It almost made me think of ice water. I've told you twice now, Dirt Pony. I'm Captain Strife of the Grand Pegasus Enclave out of Thunderhead. What I want to know is why you think you have the right to fly this monstrosity in our skies. She didn't yell or even raise her voice, but the way she spoke made me want to hide under the covers of Sunspot's bed like a fool. I'm not sure what it was, but this pony's presence alone scared me. Either that or the fact that she was the same pony who put the wanted poters up for me. Winterfrost's sister, Captain Strife. None of that seemed to bother Gunny, though, because he just chuckled again, saying, My Terudia, to be going around calling ponies things like dirt. That's the feelers and all of that. Feelings, Captain. Elliot corrected. Gunny looked over at Elliot, saying quickly, Is what Gunny said, wasn't it? No problems. He looked back to the Ice Queen. As Captain Gunny was saying... How'd you feel if Gunny went around hurting your feelers? Elliot slapped a paw against his face. You're impossible, Captain. All right, feelings. Pardon Captain Gunny's words, he's a little mad. Or so he's told from place to time, Gunny said. Gunny may go around saying things like cloud munchers and all that, but he wouldn't say it to your face, now would he? Come on, speak up. He stopped, then looked at Elliot. 
Gonna be thinking this cloud of monsters got a nice thing, Ian Herminge. I was starting to think Captain Gunny had a death wish. Or he was just really fucking stupid. But to my amazement, Captain Strife chuckled and started to laugh. For a long moment, the crew and myself watched as this Pegasus just... laughed. Finally, she looked at Captain Gunny and said, That's a new one. She looked back at her Pegasi and asked, Did you hear that? An icy thing in her minge. I have to admit, Gunny's right. Yes, I admit that it's been a long time since I've heard any pony speak to me in that way. You must have some big-ass balls on you to speak to me like that. The laughter died in a split second, and her voice turned back to that same icy chill that made my legs shake. You know what I mean. A mare with two large plasma cannons pointed right at this piece of shit glorified balloon right now. Oh, and don't forget the fifty pegasi I have on my raptor. Ten in the air, and five behind me. Captain Gunny got no ire for what you be talking about, Strife. Gunny didn't say nothing, Gunny said. One more word out of your mouth, and I'll have my pegasi rip you apart, Strife said. Gunny moved to say something. But she cut him off. I'm serious, dirt pony. One more word. Now, if you don't want to be shot out of the sky that belongs to the Grand Pegasus Enclave, I'd suggest that you listen up. Gunny tapped a hoof to Elaid's paw, then nodded towards Strife. The male twin cleared his throat, saying, We're listening, Captain Strife, and let me apologize about Captain Gunny. He has a hard time keeping his trap shut. She looked over at him like he was a sideshow at a circus, saying, I can't help but say that for a mutated freak, you and your sister amaze me. If I wasn't hunting prey right now, I'd love to sit down and find out what you are or how you were made. Bad case of killing joke, that's all, ma'am. Nothing more. My sister and I had a run-in with it a couple years back, he said politely. Hmm. I don't see the humor, but I've never been good with jokes, Strife said. Can't say that I understand it myself, Elias said. Now, how can we be of service today? Simple. You can tell me where the unicorn calling herself Shadow Star is. Before you start telling me that she's not on this sorry excuse for an airship, let me first tell you that we know she booked passage with you. A Pegasus who gives us intel in Hoofington told us she was going to be on this boat, or airship, uh, whatever you want to call it, Strife said, sounding like she'd just stepped in a pile of hellhound droppings. It's a sky carrier, also known as a skyship. They were used in a country far south of Equestrian a long time ago. Captain Gunny salvaged it and got it working again. We use it for transporting goods from one side of this wasteland to the other. As for this pony, I'd have to say that we don't know what you're talking about. Our ship is too small to have passengers, and the cargo hold is too full to keep any pony in it, and she wouldn't be able to hide up here on deck. You can check if you want to, but sadly all you'll find is a few goods, some caps, and meds. Strife smiled. Funny, because I find that hard to believe. You see, we picked up on a distress signal from one of our sets of power armor, a set that belonged to one of four pegasi who vanished a couple of hours ago when we went to chapel to pick this pony up. Gunny started to laugh as he said, Funny, cause Gunny's crew've been wondering how ye found the bitter cob. Strife wiped her head towards him. I told you not to. Yes, Gunny knows what you told him. But what seems to be escaping that head of snowy locks on your noggin is that this be Captain Gunny's ship, and there be only one room for one captain, and that be this ugly mug, Gunny said, cutting her off. It was then that I realized that Sunspot wasn't in my view anymore. Right when Strife looked ready to give the command to shoot Gunny, a loud thump filled the air, and something exploded from the raptor. 
That was followed a moment later by Gunny tossing something in the air with a mad laugh. I could tell right away that it was a pulse grenade. Strife was a quick pony, though. Her and her pegasi took to the air and managed to just get out of the blast. She rounded on Captain Gunny, yelling, Kill that filthy earth pony! Sorry to be the news of bad tidings, Sniffles, but your ship be going down, Gunny said, pointing his hoof at the raptor, which was in fact falling from the sky slowly. Two of the cloud engines on one side were gone. The ship was slowly sinking to one side as it lost half of its flying power. I'll make you pay for that, Strife started to yell, sounding more like her brother in her anger. Sadly, that rest of what she was saying was lost as Elliot moved over to one of the massive plasma cannons on the back of the bitter cob and fired it right at the falling raptor. A huge bolt of huge plasma exploded into green goo as it slammed onto the side of the already dying raptor. It sizzled and started to burn away the hull, the ship giving off an eerie groan as it fell from sight. Gunny took a moment of hesitation from the pegasi to bolt for his battle saddle, which was laying next to the hall that led to the rooms. He quickly had it on and ready, the long rifle popping out of its housing on the back. He aimed it up at the pegasi, saying, Now let's show ye scallywags what a dirt pony can be doing. He fired, one pegasus falling with a bullet flying through his wing. He screamed as he fell at least until his chin slammed into the railing on his way down, a spray of blood and a few teeth hitting the deck before his body vanished. I moved to get my own weapons to help fight off the Enclave. I should only need a shotgun from Bottle Cap. So I picked it up my magic and ran down the short hall. Gunny blocked my way, his gaze up at the fight unfolding over us. As he fired, he said, Shadow, you don't be wanting to be seen. Don't worry. Captain Gunny will keep you safe. But I can help, I said, trying to push past him. But my small stature was making it easy for him to push me back. Gunny knows you can help, but we don't be needing you right now. Right now, the bitter cob just be a rogue bunch of strange ponies using an old flying ship. They be forgetting about Gunny and his crew after today. If they know you be on the bitter cob, they be coming after the crew and you, he said, firing again. I could see his point. I didn't like it. I was tired of everyone else protecting me all the damn time. I could stand up for myself, and a small part of me didn't give two shits if this bitch came after me again. I'd purred her down like the nut job she was, her brother soon after. But still, I backed up and quickly said, Fine, but if you need me, just let me know. Gunny don't think he'll be needing ya, but he knows where to find ya. And with that, he jumped back into the fight alongside his crew. Twenty minutes later, I saw Gunny was right. He didn't need me. Not at all. With at least two dozen pegasi dead and their raptor nothing more than flames and twisted metal on the ground, Captain Strife was forced to retreat with what was left of her pegasi following. She flew out a few curse words and a promise to find Gunny again when she had time, and then she was gone. The twins landed on the deck, panting hard, blood covering parts of them and their weapons. Elliot looked down at his bloody paw, saying, Damn, I miss my talons. Hey, at least you still have digits, Sunspot said. I'm still not used to them. Gunny took a moment to look around, then said, Looks like they're gone. Elmer, Elliot, whatever, go down to the raptor and see what you can find. Sonny, be sure to find those trackers in the suits you took so they can't be following. Aye, aye, they both said and were off again. Gunny moved over to the side of his ship and spit off the side, cursing under his breath. Fucking wasteland, thinking you can have old Gunny, do ya? But you can't. He ain't done yet, not by a long shot. So you can go fuck yourself. Great. Not only was he crazy or mad, he talked to the wasteland, too, like it was a living thing. Oh, well. Beggars can't be choosers, and this weirdo was my only hope of getting back my friends. I waited a moment for him to finish with his cursing to the wasteland before walking over and standing next to him, asking, Are we going to be safe? Aye. Old Sonny takes care of the trackers, then. 
Aye. Lucky to be with the bitter cob and her crew tonight. Though it was a close call, it was. He said, looking at me. Gonna be apologizing if they attacked you down. Won't be happening again. You can't promise that, I said. He shrugged. Gunny can promise whatever he wants. Doesn't mean he'll be able to keep said promise. Well, almost anything. He can't promise on finding good cheese. Gunny loves cheese. Though not the blue stuff. Smells like a rat's arse. Tastes like a whale bile. Okay. Well then, what now? I asked, not even waiting to jump down this rabbit hole. Be heading out again in a flicker. Need to make sure everything's sharp shape. Go back to your room and do something. Gunny be calling you when he needs you, he said. And with that, he headed back to the wheel of the ship, yelling, Make it snappy, ye two. Gunny don't got all day. Gunny be having a love date with a bottle later and things could get freaky. I just shook my head and went back to Sunspot's room. Once I was there, I took a deep breath and lay down on her bed. Glory told me I needed to try and get some sleep. I tried over the past couple of days, but it was the same every time I tried. Nightmares followed by more and more and more. Ever since I left that dream world of Aquila's, I've seen the same thing, at least until last night. Last night, I dreamt about Silver dying. I saw Tonto go down in a spray of blood. I watched Gigi get stabbed by Archer, Apollo, or his father. As I closed my eyes this time, I knew I was going to see another one. And once I fell into a light slumber, my assumptions were correct. <laughs>